If you're new, welcome to the channel. If you're an OG, please act like you got some sense in front of our guests. Now today, I got a video for y'all. Now I'm a little hyped up on charge. I'm pretty sure you can tell by this because you, I'm, I can't even talk. I am super passionate about this topic and I am so glad that I have an opportunity to talk about this. So I don't, I'm, I'm, I don't follow anybody that's really religious on Twitter. All right. Um, if you don't know, I'm a Christian. Okay. Um, I'm not what you would consider a traditional Christian because I don't follow the Bible to a T. I believe that the Bible was man made, uh, obviously clearly. Um, and I think there's a lot of things in there that I, I really don't necessarily agree with, you know, um, mainly it's, it's a scripture in there about slavery, um, that I, I necessarily didn't really get a good answer about. And there's actually a lot of things in the Bible, but that's one of the most recent things when I started digging in my Bible, um, that I started asking other Christians about, and a lot of them couldn't necessarily answer why the Bible was demanding that we would, that we, we respect and, and honor, you know, our slave master, whatever it's, it's, it's weird. I had to go back and read it again to get the exact verbiage, but it was some odd nonsense. So there are things in the bible you know that that i don't necessarily agree with in the time that we live in right i'm just not for judging people and yet the bible says not to judge but when you meet a lot of church people they be real judgy all right i try not to be that way i feel like if you're going to live your life the way you, you live your life i'm going to love you for you and i'm gonna live my life my way you live your life your way and if and if there is an afterlife if there is a heaven and hell i'm gonna go where i go you go you go but while i'm here I'm going to love you for look, you because it is my job to hate the sin and not the person anyways in the first place. All right. So let's stop the preaching. I want to preach on y'all because that is not why y'all are here. I've been telling people for the longest, Joe Osteen is a scammer. Now there was a hurricane a few years ago and I, and I want to talk about this. I want to talk about the church. I want to talk about my issues and why you would never hear me really talk about the church because I don't necessarily have nice things to say. So I try to keep quiet on it because my Christian folks get a little uptight when you do this. So I'm going to type this in Joel Osteen hurricane. I can't remember which hurricane it was. All right. So hurricane Harvey in 2017, can I do me plus display? Can I do this? That is just the display. That is not me and the display. <laughs> <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on, Let me fix this. I'm trash. Yo, where it, where am I? It's supposed to be. This says me plus. Okay, whatever. What we're gonna do is we're gonna copy this window capture, and we're gonna bring that over to me. All right. Can I can I do that? All right. We're gonna do it like this, and I'm not editing this out. So Y'all gonna have to rock with me. So Hurricane Harvey occurred. Y'all can't even see that anyway. I'm gonna zoom in crazy. So Hurricane Harvey occurred in 2017. All right. And my big issue with Joel Osteen was that they were saying that, hey, we don't have places to go. And the people were trying to pressure him to allow people to be in his church. And he initially said, no, I'm not letting y'all come into church. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm not doing it. He said he's not opening doors. He's not doing it. Then when they asked him about it, he came up with an excuse initially saying that he felt like the church wasn't a safe spot and that them opening the doors could possibly lead to them flooding, damaging the church and wasn't safe. That was his excuse. Then he eventually came out and changed his stance when he was asked about it in public again. And he said that it's, uh, he didn't want to uh, do it because what was it? Where is it? I had it pulled up. I, uh, <laughs> Pretty much. He said that he would have did it if the city would have asked him to do it, but the city never asked him to do it. So therefore anybody who has a problem with him should ask the city. You can research this yourself if you don't believe me. So when this happened, I had a problem with Joel Osteen. I've always had a, I've had a, I'm going to admit my bias. I don't like mega churches at all. And I'm going to explain why in a second, once we get through this. So in 2000, but we're going to stick to the story first. In 2014, Joel Osteen reported money missing in the church. Roughly, it was, it was like $600,000 reportedly was missing from the church. And Joel Osteen reported it's stolen. All right. So people speculate it because Joel Osteen lives a lavish lifestyle. Joel Osteen has a mansion. He has vacation homes. He has a private jet. His family lives very comfortable and they don't live close to the same way that their members of their church live. They live above them, right? They live like kings and queens, a, a royal family in comparison to the people that attend their church, right? It's crazy. This is it's 5, 16 a.m. I should be getting some sleep, <laughs> but we're talking about this anyways. So 
Joe Osteen, right? They live this lavish lifestyle. So obviously those rumors, but you, but you know how your religious folks in church be, you know, they're just trying to tear me down. And this is the devil. And this is people trying to turn you away. And God got something bigger for you, right? This is what the church do, right? We see people do this all the time. I've seen some nasty, nasty stuff go down in the church. I've seen people pastors sleeping with other people's wives i've seen pastors messing around with teenage girls and i've seen people hide it in the church forever so that's why i'm passionate about this because i see disgusting stuff growing up in the church and that stuff always goes unchecked but you know what joel Osteen used god and what happens like it typically happens in the church everybody sweep it under the rug it's just a challenge god is challenging you blah 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 blah. we're gonna find that money that money is missing that's what happened well i'm here to tell you that they found the damn money. <laughs> they found the damn money, Joel. And where the hell did they find the money? Cause you probably can't see that cause it ain't zoomed in enough. The plumber found the goddamn money in the church behind a toilet, behind a loose, it was a loose toilet behind the wall. So what happened was there was an issue. He got, the plumber got called out to check this, this, uh, uh, he, he checked the, the toilet out. It was supposed to be a loose toilet. Hold on, let me go to the article. Uh, Plumber discovers money, checks, and wall of Joel Osteen's Lakewood church years after 600K burglary. The 500 envelopes full of cash and checks were found behind a loose toilet as workers moved insulation out of the wall. So in order for them to fix this toilet, they had to move stuff around, they had to take the wall down. And they found the goddamn money, bro. They found the money, bro. And then this, this, this article actually refers back to what I was talking about earlier. You may remember hundreds of thousands of dollars that were stolen from a safe at Lakewood Church. It was a big headline back in 2014. Now, all these years later, another bombshell is dropped. A plumber says he found money in the wall while he was doing work at the church on November 10th of 2021. The news came to light during the radio morning show at 100.3 The Bull. It was just unbelievable. The morning show host for the morning bullpen, George Lindsay said, the things he was telling us that they found in the walls. Lindsay was shocked when he listened to viewers Thursday morning, but says this one caller really took the segment over the edge. There was a loose toilet in the wall and we removed the towel. The caller said, we went to go remove the toilet and I moved the insulation away and about 500 envelopes fell out of the wall. And I was like, oh, wow. The caller said the envelopes were full of cash and checks. I went ahead and contacted the maintenance supervisor that was there and I turned it all in. He added Lindsay couldn't believe what he had just heard. We were like, what are you talking about? Lindsay said. So then he relayed to the US that in 2014, there was a big story about money being stolen from Lakewood church that they never recovered. In fact, the Houston police department is still investigating the seven year old case involving disappearance of 600,000. It's unclear how much money the plumber discovered, but the case raises a lot of questions. Don't you want to know what happened? I mean, they stole the money, but they didn't get it out of the wall. They did. Uh, did they have an accident? You know what I mean? It's like, why did they never go back? If it's that money, why did they never go back? All right. So I'm, I'm going to put it like this. All right. Just because people have not did not see the bags of money in Joel Osteen's hand or, or found it under his mattress in his home, they're not going to blame this man. He, he's not good. Let, let's keep it a buck. He's not going to get blamed. He's going to maintain his church. And the reason why I found this, I didn't even show y'all this. So the reason why I found this, because <laughs> I don't follow no religious people, but somehow Joel Osteen made it into my, my, my Twitter feed. All right. He said, if you believe the negative things people say about you, if you let circumstances name you, then you're giving it the right to come to pass. And when I looked at the mentions, I was like, damn, they lighting him up. What is happening? Everybody in, in the dimensions talking about money and, and showing his house. And I'm like, what is happening? So I started researching, looking to it. It's like, does this tweet specifically pertain to hiding 600K in the walls of your church and their important is stolen because it's being found has definitely come to pass. Yo, they was on his neck and I couldn't understand. So I, I did the research. That's how I found this article. Now I want to talk about this. This is, this is why I have a problem with mega churches. All right, let me get, let me get rid of this real quick. This window capture. So you just see me. This is why I have an issue with mega churches. Mega churches, in my opinion, are the dumbest thing to ever exist. I get it. You want to push religion to a larger scale. I get it. You want to share, you know, your love for Christ. I get it. But the thing is, when you have a church that is making so much money and not doing anything for the members that attend that church, it's ridiculous. 
yeah, some churches may, you know, take you out or you guys may do like a small event together, you know, maybe they'll even let you come out for a weekend and, and stay at a hotel. They do like a little, uh, a marriage retreat is what they call them. And they allow married people when they do these things, these things are pennies on the dollar of what the church is actually making. Some churches don't even do that. I've been to church where I attended them for years at a time and they didn't even do that. All you got was some Bible study and some lunch on um, Sundays, uh, uh, Sunday uh, uh, lunch. And if you went for the late session, you get a dentist, you can get a dentist session. That's the most a lot of these churches do. But when you go to these churches, they make so much money and they never do the equivalent of how much they're making back for their people. Mind you, if you do not know, all money that go through a church is untaxed. They don't pay taxes for the, none of the money that go through a church is taxed. So they're making all of this money and not taking care of their people. My thing is this, why don't churches have interest-free loans for long-term members in the church that, that constantly donate? Why don't they have interest-free loans? Why don't long-term members of churches get free funerals? You've donated money. You've been in this church for 10 years, 15 years. You done been there damn near every Sunday dedicated, paying your tithes, paying your percentage of your check, no matter what. Why isn't your funeral th uh, free through that church? Why can't a pastor come speak on your behalf and only thing that your family needs to pay for is to put you in a damn ground in your tombstone? Why? Why? What does the church do for the people, the mega churches? What do they do? And the reason why I'm so passionate about this, right? Because I, I, I told y'all this how I seen as a kid, but I have a relative in my family and it was so messed up. We didn't know that this the, the lady didn't have uh, life insurance, all right? Well, she did have life insurance, but nobody knew she had life insurance. It was like this, this policy that they found afterwards. They found it to be real, but they didn't know that she had a life insurance policy to claim. They eventually found it after she was already buried. She went to church. She went to this church like forever, bro. She went to, this is the same church I said I went to for years. She went to this church forever, bro. She was going to this church before I was born. All right. She went to this church for like roughly, man, she probably was going to that church because she passed a few years ago. So at a very minimum, when she passed, I was like 26, 27. So at a very minimum, she had been going to that church for 28 years. Do you know when we were taught, when the family was negotiating with the church, trying to set something up, the pastor was like, we're not doing nothing free. We're not. I'm sorry. The church, y'all gonna have to pay. We're not doing anything free. We, we understand that sisters been coming to this church for all these years and always donated, but it ain't free. And the family was looking around because they didn't know she, if she had a life insurance policy going, yo, how are we going to pay for everything? And the church was like, nah, we not paying for that, bro. We're not paying. They didn't say it exactly like that, right? You got to say it nice and kind. But essentially they were saying, we not paying for that, bro. And this is why I don't understand. This is why, like, I, I'll never come on here preaching. I'll never come on here talking because I'm I'm uh, I'm not conventional when it comes to Christianity. So therefore, I read my Bible. You know, I have a moral compass in place, and and I do this all on my own because it is so ridiculous how brainwashed the church has some of my Christian people. It's frustrating. I've seen people in churches what what a, the husband is straight up abusive. And they're, and they're telling the wife that she needs to get back with her husband because that's the Christian way. There is so much nastiness that goes on in the church and people ignore and turn a blind eye because it's the Christian way. It's disgusting. And I'm, I'm not saying that. I hope nobody hops on this video and starts attacking Christians. So I'm going to have to get you up out of here, you know, because I, I am a Christian. I do. I do consider myself a Christian. This isn't to attack Christianity as a whole, but the church has been infiltrated by wolves for years. And it's so sad, the ugly, nasty things we allow to happen in the church and, and then them get away with it because they, they it just God, just God, God gonna help me get through it. The fact that this got caught in this, in this man's, this, this man's wall and he hasn't addressed it. He doesn't have anything to say about it. He hasn't come out and said, you know what? I don't know where that money came from, but what we're going to do is we're going to get to the bottom of this. I'm, I'm trying to figure, I'm trying to figure it out because I've been scrolling through this dude's Twitter and he, he, he ain't saying nothing. I'm, I'm scrolling through it right now. He, he has not addressed it saying that, Hey, uh, uh, I, I don't know where this money came from. We're going to find out who did it and we're going to get down to the bottom of it. You ain't got to threaten nobody. You ain't got to do, I understand you're a Christian, you ain't got to threaten nobody, but hey, we're just going to get down to the bottom of it. You just ignoring it and hoping it go away is crazy. 
is crazy and it's suspicious that you got all this money hitting your wall this may not even be the same money that came up missing in 2014 this may be more money that they were putting aside that they're going to probably report is missing again because it's been about seven years they're possibly gonna do it again right all these riots and stuff that's happening people breaking into places you know what better time to do it it, 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 it wouldn't be a better time to do it than right now and this is scary dog this is scary this is why when i talk to people and stuff like that people are like yo are you like i've had my you know other christian friends ask me i just messed my head up i always do this but i i just i have christian friends that have hit me up and be like yo I, I, like are you religious like we don't hear you talk about it. it's like i don't want to talk about it because when i do talk about it and i say yo i don't follow it to a t it kind of offends christian because you know christians are of the belief that you can't pick and choose what you follow you gotta follow it all or don't follow you gotta follow it all you know or make an attempt to follow it all you can't pick and choose and i personally pick and choose i'm sorry so it, it, it's just i'm not trying to attack christians but it's like damn bro can we not hold people accountable bro what joe Osteen is doing is nasty it's nasty and people at the head of churches get exposed all the time for doing disgusting stuff in the church stick by his side hey hey we all make mistakes pastor we all make hey, hey so what you got caught messing with teenagers we make mistakes pastor so what you were sleeping with that that dude that attended your church for 15 years you've been sleeping with his wife but we get through it pastor it's crazy people will allow the pastor to get away with murder and then somebody else don't don't let nobody gay walk in the church the church be looking at them sideways disgusted with their lifestyle talking nasty about people super judgmental but but what you got the pastors doing is sneaking and stealing money stealing people's hard-earned money and ain't helping their people out man this this is why i think churches need to be taxed bro that whole churches don't need to be taxed is bs i have a friend who's an atheist the dude is an atheist and he just wanted to see how easy i'm, I'm sorry i'm putting you, your business out there i'm not gonna say your name i'm not i'm, I'm not gonna even put it remotely out there who you are but I got a friend who's an atheist and he just wanted to see if he can get ordained. He just, he just wanted to see if he could be a pastor, how easy the process was. This dude can literally go get people married. He can, he can, he can marry people. He can start a church if he wanted to. It was easy. The dude did like some program or whatever. It was super easy. He just did this all the time and it didn't take no time. No time. It is that easy to get into the church. I'm not saying we got to be nasty, but it's like, yo, the same nasty negative energy that y'all give to people for, for being homosexual, the same nasty negative energy that y'all give to people. We supposed to come as we are, but y'all be sitting there judging people when they come to church and they ain't got the clothes that you expect them to have. People don't look a certain way. People don't fit a certain mold. I've met some nasty people, dog. I, I, I'm, I'm gonna stop reiterating. I'm probably gonna get out of here. I just wanna say one more, one more, one more thing. So I remember when I was at my first duty station, right? It was this dude, it was this dude. He said some racist stuff to me when we was deployed, like some nasty stuff. And what's funny is I didn't report him, right? I didn't report him because he got a wife at home. He got a kid that he gotta take care of. He got a kid on the way. I didn't report him. I, I don't know. It was the Christian way. I didn't want to ruin his kid's life. I looked at the collateral damage. He was a jerk. He was a terrible person, but his wife wasn't the terrible person. His child wasn't the terrible person. So I didn't report him. Somebody else heard the racist stuff that he said to me and he and they reported him. So when he gets investigated, I'm, I'm not saying nothing, right? I, I'm telling the commander, I kind of don't want to participate in this. I am unhappy with the way that he he acted out here. He's supposed to be my my boss. He's supposed to, you know, be a leader in the military. There is no but I can't. There's no way that I can sleep at night knowing that he gets kicked out the military. His wife, you know, already doesn't really make any money and they have a kid on the way. I can't sleep at night knowing I did that. So they call they called investigation off. But because he did that, he got a bad reporting. Like at the end of the year, they do like a performance report. He got a bad report, so he couldn't promote for three years. So this dude's goal for that moment forward was to get me kicked out the kicked out the military, right? He's lying on me. He's writing me crazy paperwork. He's doing all type of dirty stuff. So I report. I said, yo, this dude is retaliating against me. He did that racist stuff. He allowed other people to say racist stuff to me before we even deployed. And he never did nothing as a supervisor. This dude's trying to get me out the Air Force, right? So we had a flight chief even above him, even higher. This dude was disgusting. He pulled me in his office. He heard the story. He pulled me in the office and he didn't even ask me my side of the story. He said, I think you're garbage. I think you're trash. You're using a man's past against him instead of owning up to what you've done. And I said, sir, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't do what I'm being accused of doing, which is why I'm fighting so hard. And he goes, no, I think you're trash. I think you're a liar. 
and I don't believe anything that you're saying is what he told me. And he went over across the street to our commander, right? And I was I was supposed to make an official statement because they were going to give me what is called an Article 15 in the military, right? So I wrote an official statement. He takes it over to the commander across the street and the commander reads. He doesn't read. I'm sorry. The commander doesn't read it. He asked me, he said, hey, man, this handwriting is kind of sloppy. They, they let you do your, your, your rebuttal in handwriting. Hey, not like actually like you get paperwork is not a handwriting, but if you make an official statement, you can make an official statement in writing. So I make the official statement. The commander asked my flight chief what to say because my handwriting is sloppy at the time. Flight chief gives him a completely different story, lies and says that I uh, 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 owned up to my actions and that I'm willing to take the consequences that come with it. So the commander brings me in and blues a couple days later to take my stripe away. Give me my article 15. Well, he probably gonna give me my article 15. I'm probably gonna lose a stripe and maybe even get kicked out because I was I was being uh, um I was being accused of violating like safety, a safety violation because I was jumping out of the, uh, a, a fuel tank and my respirator cracked on the side and I got sick and I went to the hospital and he colluded with other supervisors said I never had the respirator. So when I showed my broken respirator, like it broke as I was getting out, they was like, nah, 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 we ain't trying to hear it. We already got our stories together. So I was getting a safety violation and this dude went across the street. The flight chief told my commander that I was on up to. So when the commander brought me in, he was like, I could understand if you had an issue that came, something happened. He was like, but you owning up to it, I have no choice but to penalize you. And I said, what are you, what are you talking about? I didn't do that. And I, he, we started talking. I told him, I said, sir, I, I, I disagree with this entire thing. I said, I didn't do it. It's in my statement that he brought you yesterday. And he goes, oh, I'm like, sir, did you read the statement? He says, no. It was a little sloppy in the handwriting, so I just asked your flight chief to give me a, 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 a description of what you said to, to come to a conclusion. So he, he has my flight chief come back over there. He kicks me out the office and has my flight chief read him my, uh, 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 my, my official statement. And they end up removing me from the work center because he lied. Now, I'll tell you this long story to tell you. He did all that stuff to me. I went to a local church in the city and I bumped into this guy, right? I bump into this guy and he sees me in the church and he goes, Wow, I didn't know you go to church here. Now I look at him and I'm just like, we're, we're looking for a new home. We've been going to a couple churches. We're looking for a new home. And he goes, oh, that's that's beautiful. That's beautiful. So after about a few weeks of him seeing me at church every Sunday, he comes up to me and says, man, I was wrong about you. I thought you was a bad person. You're actually a good person. And when, when he did that to me, it was like, what are you basing this off of? You were this evil, lying, manipulative, manipulative person that tried to get my career ended a, like a couple months ago. And now I'm this good old person just because you see me in a church. This is the type of weird, fake, nasty stuff that happens in a church where people just hide under religion and are really terrible people and no one calls them out because it's just religion. It's weird. It's weird. I've seen some terrible stuff happen and it's wild that Joel Osteen is probably going to get away with this again. I say all this to say, man, I, I, I don't want to, I don't want to deter people from religion. Cause like I said, I do believe in Christianity. All right. But what I will say is I would love to see the culture change in the church where we can hold people accountable in the church. All right. When the pastor's wilding out, I would like to see the pastor held accountable. When a woman is getting abused by her husband, I don't want to hear people saying that you need to stick it out with that man for the sake of those kids and the fact that you married because it's the death do you part. I don't want to see nasty stuff like that. I don't want to keep seeing stuff like where the church doesn't take mental health serious and let God fix your mental health issues when your mental health issues is a chemical imbalance and, and no matter no amount no amount of praying is going to fix it. All right. I, I don't I don't like the fact that, you know, people do conversion therapy hidden under the guise of religion. There's a lot of nasty stuff in religion that we need to address and stop allowing to slide. All right. So I start this video off joking and I'm sorry I got a little bit serious, but man, this is nasty. And a lot of the stuff that I've seen in church is nasty. And I hope that they do hold Joel Osteen accountable. This dude is a wolf. I'm telling you. There, there's no clearer signs. I don't care how many religious people you talk to that's going to tell you that Joel Osteen is dope. Any of my Christian friend, fan, uh, friends that I've talked to about Joel Osteen and told them I think he's a wolf have blown me off or tried to eh, get around the conversation. You know what I'm saying? They don't want to have that conversation. They don't want to talk about it because it makes them uncomfortable because he, he's such a big person in the Christian community. So, um, uh, that's all I really got for this video. <laughs> I'm sorry I went off on them long tangents, uh, but if you made it to the end of this video, thank you for your time. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'm out, Chief.